Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Amnesia Rebirth. We escaped this world once, but we've stumbled right back in. First time we've been able to check in with the baby in a while. It's a relief to know that she's safe after that that nauseatingly long period of silence. Too much oil going into this. That's a pretty good problem to have. Either the well was very deep, or she fell very slowly, for she had plenty of time as she went down to look about her and to wonder what was going to happen next. Every step we take it, it feels like we're further from There must be a way back. By the way, this episode's gonna involve a lot of exposition. I hope you're ready for a backstory. In this dormant laboratory. This diagram does tell us something important. Indecipherable as parts of it might be, the people of this world are roughly humanoid. I find myself again confined. A day should not matter, but each day feels like waste. There is so much to do. Tamaku tells me that now, with Vitae, I have forever. But the people who depend on me do not. There is always something. Invasion, rivalry, sickness, penury. I have my duty. Perhaps I should end these sessions. Now they've found a way to stabilize the disease. I should be ecstatic. I should accept my fate and move on. It is such a faint hope that they can find any way to heal me. That they can find any way to grant my dearest wish. Now you are eternal, says Tamaku. Now you need no heir. None of them understand. This is not about politics or securing a future. This is not for the Empire. This is for me. Just for me. She wants a child, but is unable to bear what one. The hell? Iliander, Septarch of the Enkindled Fortress, has dispatched dispatched messengers to the Outer Isles under the guise of a trade mission. Despite our previous warning, it is my recommendation that we relocate three-fifths of the second regiment to the Isles immediately. On the matter of the harvested stock, uh, it has been suggested that with the new chamber development, the need for such stock will diminish. I believe that's short-sighted. This new capacity shortly means that we are at liberty to increase the number of factories. With that, we can vastly increase our defense capability as well as increase standards of living across the Empire. This new expertise is a gift. We would be wise to make use of it. Instruct me, Great Empress. 
and I will inform the council of your decision in your name eternal. Reinvesting all of that harvested Vitae. Vitae harvested from torture. We know this from the Dark Descent. Reinvesting that to expand the factories to extract ever more and then to expand more to extract more. We know how they extract Vitae. All those instruments in Castle Brennenberg, the Iron Maiden, the wheel, the brazen bull, they are doing that same torture, but on an industrial scale and tweaked for the greatest possible efficiency. They have factories for Vitae, industrial farms for pain and agony. What they have done is a nightmare and a very blunt way of distilling the process of subjugating an entire people to plunder what they have. So the woman from the Oasis. literally vampirically draining the life from them in the most painful of ways. Under the sign of Ranu on the third rise, the first calling, I, Atharu, make this record. I have completed the comparison of the samples from the Empress and from the bones of her mother, Blessed Atua. It is clear now that both carried this sickness, although it did not manifest in the forebears. While Vitae is, a po is powerful enough to rebind bone and sinew without repeated application, the health again deteriorates. A single dose is no cure. It merely, it merely drives the decay back for a time. Tamaku orders that I test repeated application uh, quantities, insertion points, timings in her name. Their people are, are being tortured indefinitely so that she may live. Under the sign of Ranu, on the fourth rise of the eighth calling, Ayatharu make this record. As Tamaka directs, I have compared the most ancient of our records of the Empress's malady with the newly taken samples. In the earliest of samples, Tamaku was correct. The nutritive flow to both organs and generativity were intact, albeit reduced, and therefore they would have been functional before the spinal repair. However, since the influx of Vitae, the organs are now entirely withered. Why has the substance not reconstructed them? Did the degenerative malady affect them permanently before the treatment began? This one's broken, yeah. It's agonizing that these are broken. Cause you just wanna fill in those gaps so bad. You wanna know the full extent of it, but you are denied that. Another rift. That could be our way out. Under the sign of Idu, on the first rise of the eighth calling, I, Kita, make this record. The configuration of the new test gate has been delayed by a failure in a subsidiary node. Mihara, you must complete it on the next rise, as you have been prepared. Place the orb in the center, select the focusing symbols for this alignment, and insert two full cells of Vitae. Remember Tamaku's lessons, Mihara. Master the orb. It is your focus and discipline that will open the portal and allow objects to be sent through. 
the orb, the orb again. And now there is one right in front of us. It feels like, like it's waking up. <sighs> this is how the gate builders built their way gates by harnessing the power of something that heralds the shadow from the Dark Descent, this supernatural entity that manifests a, a rampant tumor-like growth that just spreads and spreads. Also, horrifically, in addition to the orb, two full cells of Vitae. Sean. Uh, this is my favorite shot in the game, by the way. I love, 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 love this scene. It is overwhelming. Uh, it's both rad and just oppressively terrifying. And it's a window into the desolation of this whole society. And you can see the red glow of the factory is still running. There was a white sun at the great gate. It tore the air and the land. A corruption of living flesh crawls from the hole in the world and turns all to ash and rust. The control stones have turned against my kindred, shaping them into floating wraiths of nightmare. The city falls. I am to blame. My companions took my formula, some to use it to destroy the Vitae at the gate, others to infect the Vitae pipelines and end the suffering. The gate has indeed fallen, but catastrophically, unleashing energies beyond belief. Still the factory scream. We have failed in the worst of ways. It is my duty to stay at my post, to see if I can find means to end it. I have no choice but to use the Vitae. An ocean holds the great Empress to life, so a meager portion will suffice for me. If any find this record, know that I was the traitor Kita. Alchemist, apprentice to Tamaku, forgive us our folly. Still the factory scream. This is Kida. They were trying to end all of this suffering by infecting the Vitae pipeline to break the cycle, but instead, the shadow fully manifested and brought all this desolation. And now... Oh, God! The worst part of all is they didn't stop the production of Vitae. It can prolong life indefinitely, so as long as the amount that they take from a person is more than what they need to keep that person alive, they can harvest from them forever. Still the factories scream. It has taken me many, many rises in the gaps between my work for Tamako, but finally it is done. I have a formula which is in sympathy with the pulse of the orb. 
I can provoke the symptoms of the red flesh, and with it will come destruction, channeled through the Vitae network. This might be the answer we seek. Tamaku's early experiments with the orbs summoned an entity, a creature, that scarred the world with its passing and wreaked utter destruction. The scar took the form of living, pulsating flesh. I have studied the orb, and I now know why the scars appear. I believe I can make use of the same perturbation to achieve our own ends. And look at the situation. Kita was keeping themselves alive in perpetuity, waiting for the opportunity to right their wrong, but was sustained on the suffering of others nonetheless. And we took the essence of all that suffering and their life. So we would have uh, enough gas to get home. We are, in a way, implicated in this. We are, at the bare minimum, the beneficiaries of that suffering. So we need one of those relay pylons over there. But first, uh, since we have the orb in both cells of Vitae, we can finally do this whole puzzle. Uh, first, we'll set the orb in place, come here, clear some of the, some of the rubbish out. I mean, maybe the cubes are very important. I don't know what they are. Uh, but I don't want them in the chamber. Now we can move this uh, vertically and horizontally. So we just want to look for the alignment that gives us that pattern back there on the wall uh, in the other room. Looks like it's up and over a little. Is that the right one? Yeah. Oh, I forget what to do now. I think I, I just forgot what the point of the puzzle was. Uh, I... I think it's to get one of those uh, power relays into that room by warping it over. Uh, but first, we have to lift the lockdown by taking the orb out of the pedestal. So we can come get this. Uh, and I think we should be good now. And we just have to put the orb back. Right? This looks right. Yeah, we did it. We did the thing. A tower. Smoke. That's the town. And the doctor. Oh, oh. 
that would be the shadow. Oh, it can still follow me through that corridor between dimensions. Can follow me into the liminal space. But not into this liminal space. <laughs> what a terrifying line. Alice? Alice! Salim! Salim, quickly! horrifying question that keeps being prodded at is is whatever's afflicting Tazi affecting the child are they okay uh. Now with this, her pregnancy progressing so impossibly fast, it puts an even sharper point on it. Especially since we have this parallel side story going on with the Empress and her hereditary degenerative illness. Between this and the isolation, the, the terror of amnesia rebirth is not anything like the Dark Descent, but it is 
an incredibly rich well of terror. It's the kind that is less based on, on startling you and keeping the tension really high and your heart rate up and more just getting down into the pit of your stomach and ooh. festering there. Down we go, I guess. last thing we need right now is a labyrinth. But a labyrinth is what we have. Now toss. Seems like every one of those we explore is a huge risk of getting sent right back. But there might be two matches or something, so who can say whether it's good or bad? What? Ah. Ah. Ah, okay. Nothing ahead. Therefore, try attacking. <laughs> Yeah, that should be more alarming. We cannot catch a break. Okay. We gotta go. <laughs> I nearly had my foot dissolved by an incomprehensible being of living, corrupted flesh. But I got oil out of it, so who can say whether it's good or bad? The Empress gets to live forever, and all it took was the perpetual torture of her entire society. So really, who could say? Jesus. It's unbelievably dark. Looks like it might be promising. I can't believe this. What if 
I get even bigger. Too many dark corners. I'll try to hold on, but this will be difficult with the one. Oh, it's starting to go. Time to make our way back here then. Thankfully, it's nice and well lit in these corridors. E. Oh! Run from the Kool-Aid flesh. Oh my god. Oh god! Come on! It is really, really hard to flee from this while I can't see anything. Oh, come on. Come on. Where my entire field of view is like 15 degrees and everything outside is shadow. And everything behind me is the shadow. Duh, damn it. He didn't like my joke? Oh, no. <clears throat> and with our escape made, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one, y'all.